In the lower part of the anal canal, there are vascular and connective tissue cushions. They are a normal part of the anatomy and function as protective pillows that engorge with blood during the act of defecation, protecting the anal canal from direct trauma due to passage of stool. The anus has three vascular cushions, one at 3 o'clock, one at 7 o'clock, and one at 11 o'clock. When these vascular cushions become abnormally enlarged and stretched, they can become uncomfortable, irritating and sometimes pathological causing pain and rectal bleeding. Hemorrhoid, also known as piles, is defined as abnormal enlarged, inflamed veins around the anus or the lower part of the rectum, often causing pain, anal itching and rectal bleeding. Worldwide, the overall prevalence of hemorrhoids in the general population is estimated to be 4.4%. Hemorrhoids affect people of all ages, genders, races, and ethnicities. They're one of the leading causes of anal pathology and most common cause of rectal and anal complaints. The likelihood of developing hemorrhoids increases as a person age, affecting more than half of people over age 50. And women are more likely to get hemorrhoids while pregnant. There are two types of hemorrhoids. The first type is internal hemorrhoids, which form in the lining of the anus and lower rectum. Internal hemorrhoids are deep inside the rectum and not visible from outside. They are found superior to the dentate line and lined with columnar epithelium. Normally, they are painless. Rectal bleeding is frequently the first sign of internal hemorrhoids. Internal hemorrhoids can further be classified into different grades according to their size. First degree. They do not prolapse and remain in the rectum. Only bleeding announces their presence. Second degree. Prolapse through the anus on defecation, but spontaneously reduce. Third degree. Prolapse through the anus on defecation, but require digital or manual reduction. And fourth degree. This is a permanent prolapse where it remains persistently prolapsed. The second type of hemorrhoids is external hemorrhoids, which form under the skin around the anus and are therefore visible. They are found below the dentate line and lined by squamous epithelium. They are usually very painful because this portion of the body has more sensitive nerves. They may bleed if you strain when passing a stool. Sometimes blood pools in an external hemorrhoid and forms a clot or thrombus giving rise to thrombosed hemorrhoids, which presents with a hard lump near your anus, swelling, inflammation and severe pain. Anyone is at risk of getting hemorrhoids, even teenagers are susceptible to hemorrhoids. Children rarely get hemorrhoids because they take so long to develop. Excessive straining is one of the key risk factors for hemorrhoids, like in chronic constipation. Low-fiber diets cause small-caliber stools, which result in straining with defecation. Raised intra-abdominal pressure like in pregnancy. And increasing age, because as you get older, the tissues that support the veins in your rectum and anus can weaken and stretch. Hemorrhoids are caused by straining veins in the anus and rectum. Anal and rectal veins might become enlarged and irritated as a result of straining that increases pressure on your belly or lower extremity. This factors that causes increased pressure and straining include chronic constipation. Straining during bowel movements adds extra pressure on the walls of the blood vessels. Heavy lifting. Hemorrhoids are caused by lifting heavy objects repeatedly. Sitting for too long. Hemorrhoids can be caused by sitting for lengthy periods of time, especially on the toilet. Pregnancy. Because the uterus expands, it presses on the vein in the colon, causing it to bulge. Obesity. Obesity caused by a poor diet might result in hemorrhoids, especially diet low in fibers. Aging due to loss of muscle tone in old age. And genetics. Hemorrhoids are a condition that some people inherit. Signs and symptoms of hemorrhoids usually depend on the type of hemorrhoid. We'll look at the symptoms for each type of hemorrhoids. With internal hemorrhoids, you may have painless bleeding during bowel movements. You would see bright red blood in your stool, on toilet paper, or in the toilet bowl after a bowel movement. Internal hemorrhoids rarely cause pain unless they prolapse. Prolapsed hemorrhoid is a hemorrhoid that has fallen through the anal opening. With external hemorrhoids, you may have itching or irritation in your anal region, swelling around your anus, pain or irritation, and bright red bleeding. With thrombosed hemorrhoids you may have severe pain, inflammation, swelling, and a hard lump near the anus. Other symptoms include pruritus, rectal fullness, feeling of incomplete evacuation, 
ulceration and soiling due to impaired continence or mucus discharge. Rectal bleeding and other hemorrhoid-like symptoms can be caused by a variety of gastrointestinal issues. Therefore, it is important to exclude other causes of rectal bleeding. And this are ulcerative colitis, colon cancer, and diverticular disease. Anyone who is experiencing the symptoms listed above should seek medical attention. Your doctor will ask about your medical history and do a physical exam. External hemorrhoids are frequently diagnosed by examining at the area around the anus. Your doctor will also do a digital rectal exam to check for internal hemorrhoids. To do this, your doctor will insert a lubricated, gloved finger into the rectum to feel for anything that is abnormal. To check for internal hemorrhoids, your doctor will perform a procedure called anoscopy to view the lining of the anus and rectum. Another procedure called sigmoidoscopy might be done to view inside the lower part of the colon and rectum. A thorough blood count and clotting screen are required if there is severe or sustained bleeding or symptoms of anemia. Almost all hemorrhoids, especially those that aren't complicated, can be treated conservatively. Hemorrhoids usually go away without therapy. You can most often treat your hemorrhoids at home by taking a stool softener or a fiber supplement. Drinking enough fluids every day. Soak in a warm bath, also known as sits bath for 10 to 20 minutes a day. Avoid sitting on the toilet for long periods of time. Apply over-the-counter medications containing lidocaine, which hazel or hydrocortisone to the affected area. Take non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs for pain and inflammation. You should see your health care provider if you still have symptoms after one week of at-home treatment, have bleeding from your rectum, and if symptoms get worse or interfere with your daily life or sleep. If at-home treatments for hemorrhoids don't help you, you may need a medical procedure. Rubber band ligation. A small rubber band placed around the base of a hemorrhoid cuts off blood supply to the vein. Sclerotherapy. A chemical injected into the swollen vein destroys hemorrhoid tissue. Infrared coagulation. A small probe inserted into the rectum transmits heat to get rid of the hemorrhoid. Surgical treatments include. Hemorrhoidectomy. Surgery removes large external hemorrhoids or prolapsed internal ones. Hemorrhoid stapling. A stapling instrument removes an internal hemorrhoid, or it pulls a prolapsed internal hemorrhoid back inside the anus, and holds it there. Keeping your feces soft and easy to pass is the greatest approach to avoid hemorrhoids. This can be achieved in one or more of the following ways. Going to the toilet when needed. The longer the wait, the drier the stools will be. Eat high-fiber foods to increase the bulk of stool, which will help you avoid the straining that can cause hemorrhoids. Drink six to eight glasses of water each day to help keep stools soft. Avoid long periods of sitting. Maintaining a healthy body weight. And when using the toilet, try not to strain. This creates pressure in the veins in the lower rectum. Rare complications of hemorrhoids exist, and this are. Fistula formation. Hemorrhage. Anemia. Strangulated hemorrhoid. Non-healing wounds. And urinary retention. If you or someone you know is dealing with hemorrhoids, don't hesitate to consult a medical professional for personalized advice and treatment options. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with others who might benefit from it. Subscribe to our channel for more insightful videos on various health topics, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss an update.